Efficiency. It's a skill you might not have learned in Valheim yet. So today I'm gonna to go over seven efficiency tips and topics ranging from combat to comfort and beyond. This video is aimed at beginners and intermediate players, but I have many more guides to come for all types of players. So if you like this video, consider subscribing. The first thing I wanna talk about today is how the landscape can affect your damage output. But before I can properly talk about that, we need to talk about the game's damage mechanic. When you attack a single target, you're dealing 100% of that strike's damage to the target. If you hit more than one target with a single strike, the damage is divided amongst each of the targets. So, if there are two targets, each target will take a percentage of the total damage from that strike. And if there are three, then the division still applies, making each of the targets receive less damage than if you were to attack just one of them. This is why it feels like it takes longer to kill clusters of enemies, because it does. So what does this have to do with efficiency? This mechanic applies to all objects, even the ground. If you're cutting wood on a hill and the incline of the hill is in front of you, the game thinks you're striking both the tree and the hill at the same time, therefore reducing your damage to the tree per swing. Remember, this mechanic applies to everything from beehives to cave walls, so be mindful of your positioning when attacking or harvesting. Speaking of attacking, there's a lot that can go wrong during combat, so let's talk about some combat efficiency. Stamina and health are two of the biggest components to combat, so naturally it's important to have the best food available to you. But instead of talking about food, let's quickly address one of the most important things in the game, meads. There are some meads you can get pretty early on that'll be of great benefit to you in the future, like the medium healing mead and the tasty mead, and I recommend making as many of them as you can. Tasty Mead is far superior to Stamina Mead in terms of efficiency, because after 10 seconds you can just eat another Tasty Mead and have a full bar of stamina in like 2 seconds. Plus, if you've eaten good food, big fights will quickly become minor scuffles through the use of Meads and Meads. The reason this falls into combat efficiency is because you essentially get a larger health and stamina pool through the use of Mead, and if you ask me, being able to tank and deal more damage means you'll end combat encounters more quickly, or at the very least with your life. Also, positioning is your best friend in combat. The AI in Valheim are pretty stinking stupid, so if you're ever low on health or stamina during a fight, you can usually kite enemies around until you're good to start fighting again. Ranged attacks can easily be avoided by hiding behind rocks or trees, and basically any attack can be negated by rolling or parrying. All right, so organization is probably one of the most useful things you can have if you want to be efficient. It's important to have areas in your base for specific things, like a crafting room that has nearby storage for frequently used resources, or a cooking and potion room with food and honey, or even an entire room dedicated to labeled storage. Don't get me wrong, if you have everything placed loosely in the middle of a base without any organization, you can still thrive in the game, but I imagine you'll get pretty frustrated every time you're trying to craft. Nicely labeled storage is important because you'll be accessing chests frequently, but beyond that, you really need an organized portal hub. Portal hubs are a simple way to keep your teleportation needs neat and easy to understand, but most importantly, it keeps them all in a single location so you don't ever have to remember where one leads. Labels are absolutely mandatory if you have anything more than like one or two portals in your hub, especially if you're exploring as much as I do. I have portals that lead to many different locations, but no matter what portal I step through, I'll always be teleported back to this main organized hub. Additionally, I usually keep a spare portal or two at my portal hub tagged exploration or something along those lines so that no matter where I end up, I always have a free portal available at my portal hub. When talking about organization in Valheim, it's impossible not to mention map markers. I label pretty much everything, from certling spawns to resource nodes and even things like current ship position, future travel locations, and cleared crypts and camps. Keeping up with your map will make your life a billion times easier as you start to creep towards the end of the game, since you'll have to continue to stock up on resources from all the biomes. And let's be real, having to look for fresh copper nodes or sunken crypts without markers can be a painful, time-consuming headache. Just double click your map to set a marker, left click to cross it off, and right click to remove it. Don't forget to label them. Next up, we've got seeds. No, 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 not, not those seeds, these seeds, like the map seed. Spawning your character on a new world can be a great way to stock up on resources or keep your valuables away from thieves and griefers. For example, beehives were nearly impossible to find on my main world, so I loaded the seed bees in the hopes that I'd find loads of beehives as a clever easter egg type gift from the devs. 
I wasn't overwhelmed with a world full of beehives like I was hoping for, but I only spent a few minutes there and got enough queen bees to meet my needs. Transferring can be done by logging out of your world with whatever gear you want to bring with you, then selecting the character from the main menu and loading into a new world. From there, you'll have everything you had before you logged out and can adventure as much as you'd like. If you're playing on a server with friends and don't like the way wards look, this is a really good way to keep them from your loot. So, if you've beaten the first boss, it's time to find the merchant, Haldor. He sells a belt called Megingjord that allows you to carry an extra 150 pounds for the low, low price of 950 coins. Haldor spawns somewhere in the Black Forest, but can be as far as the edge of the world. So, if you're having trouble finding him, use this seed and head southwest. Haldor is just a short distance away around the mountain, and it took me maybe 10 minutes to find him from that seed. Set up a portal if you found him on your main world in case you wish to go back for any resources or gear he sells, plus I'm sure the devs will do a lot more with Haldor in the future. But essentially this helps you carry loads more, particularly metal, which you'll need lots of. Moving on, let's talk about the rested buff. When you have the rested buff, your stamina regenerates 100% faster than if you weren't rested, and your health regenerates 50% faster as well. The higher the comfort level at your base, the longer the rested buff will last. Additionally, the rested buff increases experience gained for each of your skills, and I actually tested this to verify. I wanted to see how much XP I got for jumping, so I created two characters. I had one jump without the rested buff until level 2, and one with the rested buff until level 2. Without the rested buff, it took 6 jumps to get to level 2, but with the rested buff, it only took 5. It's a slim difference, but the difference is enough for me to want it all the time. I also tested stamina regen with a buff and without, and the difference is actually kind of remarkable. Without the rested buff, swamps and mountains become deadly. You can increase comfort at your base by placing furniture around your bed like rugs, banners, and chairs. It might seem like a waste of time and resources, but the benefits greatly outweigh the cost. It's such a great buff that I actually recommend keeping at least a little bit of comfort at any of your camps or outposts so that you can remain rested throughout your adventure. All right, next up, let's talk about hauling heavy resources. When you get to the Iron Age after the second boss, you'll potentially have to travel long distances to get scrap iron, and if you're not prepared, it could take you ages to get enough iron to do anything worthwhile. Even before the second boss, getting copper and tin can be extremely annoying and time consuming without a good solution to its heavy weight. Fortunately, there are a few options available to you. The first is a cart which is awesome for moving metal over a distance. It's got 18 inventory slots, but since it's human powered and physics based, it might actually be difficult to move a heavy cart uphill, so make sure you're keeping that in mind. Feel free to use the hoe to make yourself some roads to and from areas you travel to frequently to help move the cart a little bit more easily. If you're in the Iron Age and have to sail anywhere at all to get your iron, the very first thing you should make with your first 10 iron ingot is a long ship. It moves significantly faster than the carve and has significantly more storage, so it's going to help you gather loads of iron quickly and efficiently. Hauling huge amounts of heavy material will require you to utilize all of the efficiency tips we've talked about so far. So. Building a dock and keeping a cart there to move your stuff from the dock to your base is a good idea. Or you could just build your base right on the shore so you don't have to move metal on land for more than a few meters. Efficiency is something you'll have to learn if you want to do pretty much anything in Valheim, and that's why I'll be making an advanced efficiency guide as well. It's going to cover things like AFK farms, taming, and more, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Also, I post my Valheim adventures to Twitter, so follow me there. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.